My name is Polly Morgan and I'm a sculptor. My name is Bill Price. I'm a structural engineer by background at WSP. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynn Wong Holmes and I work for the London Legacy Development Corporation as Head of Landscape and Public Realm. I began my work as a sculptor via a strange route because I didn't go to art school. I was always very interested in creating things um, and trying to find um, outlets for the creativity. So I tried various disciplines, just doing like photography course and messing around with drawing and clay and stuff. And then I um, learned taxidermy. It was always much more to do with having an animal as part of a larger sculpture. But then over the years, my work has changed quite a bit and it's become a lot less narrative driven and, and more abstract. And I've learned to use many more materials. I've, since learning taxidermy, I've learned to mold and cast and learned to paint the cast. So I'm using uh, a lot of different paint techniques. I've begun my work as an artist, uh, mostly working with taxidermy birds. I've also done mammals over the years. And all of those skills have kind of informed what I'm doing now with the snakes. Um, but I've, I've gone from bird to mammal to snakes to eventually doing away with the skins altogether and now I'm, I use the animals to make the cast but uh, the casts themselves are made out of um, fiberglass and I paint directly onto them so there's actually no organic matter in the final product anymore. I was involved in the judging process and it was really interesting to see Polly's approach to something that would respond to both Dora House and Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. I think it's really interesting her practice was moving from being something that was very um, small scale to then thinking about how you would deal with the public space. I think right from uh, early days I seemed to get involved with helping artists and sculptors with pieces of work and I always found it enjoyable. You have a very close connection with the person that is uh, designing the work and creating the uh, the, the object. Today at WSP there are probably 10 or 20 people who are familiar with, uh, with working with artists and sculptors for you know typically large large items in the public realm. I originally made a maquette of the sculpture that I wanted to make which was just very straightforward pieces of polystyrene and essentially plasticine kind of molding the, um, the, um, the snake part until I got a, a shape that I was very happy with and I scaled this up so it's now about two, two meters tall um, and I had CAD drawings made of it which um, I then sent to an engineer and I consulted with an engineer because I was suddenly I'd gone from working on a very small scale in the studio entirely by myself to working with um, concrete which is extremely heavy and potentially very dangerous if you're making something that is cantilevered, which I was doing. I consulted with Bill Price, who was, is on the, um, the panel for the Royal Society of Sculptors. Um, and he was incredibly, incredibly helpful. Um, gave up time to discuss the work with me, um, came up with drawings to give to a fabricator who was gonna do the actual concrete casting for me. So once they had all been signed off, um, a fabricator called Windsor Workshop in Croydon built um, containers to my specification to pour the concrete in and we um, hired a cement mixer and we brought it to the studio which again was a sort of six-man job with um, a gantry to lift it because it, it weighs close to a ton the whole thing. Assembled it in the studio and now it's this is the point where I get to work on it with the snakes. First Plinth Award is open to all members of the Royal Society of Sculptors. The prize is to be exhibited outside the Royal Society of Sculptors and also at another location at the uh, Olympic Park. First Prince Award is something that's come to the park before and we have a beautiful uh, partnership arrangement with the Royal Society of Sculptors and we're really excited to see Polly Morgan's piece being developed and hopefully find its place um, in Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. This work is my first ever public or outdoor commission. It became possible because I decided in the process of making sculptures with snakes, which I had been doing since 2014, I think, I discovered that I would get a much better effect if I painted directly onto the cast. And I did that on this sculpture for my exhibition in 2020, um, which was snakes sort of bursting out of a 
cavity in a concrete block. Um, I learned so much doing that sculpture. I was, as soon as I'd finished it, I was very excited to try and continue, do something similar again, because I'd learned such a lot and I felt like I could um, use those skills in something even more ambitious. Uh, and I discovered the uh, Royal Society of Sculptors um, Award, where they, um, they will commission an artist's first outdoor public sculpture. Um, which was perfect for me because I'd never done that before and I just learned all of um, these techniques and, and was really, really keen to, to start making something bigger and more ambitious and I, um, I entered the prize and I won it. The important thing about the first Plinth Award is that it's really uh, an artist's first step into a larger piece of public sculpture. The process uh, of converting that from a maquette into, into the actual item is an interesting process. In the case of Polly, the object uh, scale was modified and adjusted in, the, in her design development process. And we worked closely with her to really uh, make sure that what uh, got constructed and built was going to be robust and safe as part of the exhibit. We need certain things for safety and security and resilience and durability and the artist is also looking for something in terms of the effect, the appearance and the meaning of what, of what the piece is about. We represent some of the safety net so I'm, I'm very proud that we provide that. What's, what really interests me about snakes I think is that that very often their patterns and their colours are they're sending signals out all the time to appropriate the image of another thing or creature in order to deceive someone. And it made me realise, particularly during COVID and the lockdowns, and uh, I was watching the way people were curating their lives and themselves and putting themselves out there. Some of them would want you to think they were having a fabulous time when maybe they weren't. In a more sort of basic sense, wearing false you know, hair pieces and false nails and the way that they dress or they use filters on their face to make them look younger or, or different or a smaller nose or whatever it might be. All of these things which had sort of perplexed me and sort of in some way irritated me even though you know I'm not above those things myself. I was looking through these feeds and quietly working in the studio and painting these things and it made me understand that it's the most natural thing in the world to do that and I think that has fed into my work an awful lot. I also, um, when I'm making a work there's, there's a sort of, there is a concept behind it but there's also balance and it's to do with the mass of the object and the space between it and the juxtaposition of different textures and colours um, and in this instance what I, I really like this something appeals to me very much about the, the juxtaposition of concrete and snakes because the concrete's this very quite sort of matte crumbly raw surface and snakes are just sort of so incredibly they look and they're not wet at all, they're completely dry, but they kind of look, they've got this beautiful sort of wet like sheen on them. And the juxtaposition of those like amazing colours and that kind of perfection against this kind of rougher surface I find very appealing. And it also says to me something about, about us and about urbanisation and about the way that we live. I feel like the snakes to me, they, can't, they sort of represent bodies generally. Could it be, you know, human bodies and the way that we design architectural kind of shapes and buildings and things around us for us to kind of inhabit and to fill in some way. And, and that's kind of what I'm thinking of when I'm packing these snake bodies into these um, quite kind of architectural forms, um, casting concrete. The first plinth is, I think, is a really important piece of work. What's going to be really nice is going with Polly on to the park and actually look at where we could best position the piece. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how people will interact with it, um, how they will view it. It is a it's a very different sort of situation. Holly's piece totally fits with the London Legacy Development Corporation and the Queen's Olympic Park kind of key themes and our corporate objectives, um, particularly about supporting new talent. Since I applied for the award right from the beginning, even before I was um, uh, shortlisted, Lorraine and Caroline and everyone, uh, the Royal Society of Sculptors have been so helpful and supportive. And just, yeah, having a kind of people to lean on and to call on and to suddenly have this whole team of people behind the first Plinth Prize. The opportunity to show it at Dora House and then the Olympic Park is a dream. I used to live on that site before um, the Olympics came on an old industrial estate. So hot. To be back all these years later, 
showing my work almost exactly on the site where I used to live is just a beautiful end to the story.